Hey, Vinny G back at you with another project video. I want to first of all thank my dad for helping me for the past two months working on this, but this thing is awesome. I've tested it out with him and I've tested it out with my brother Austin. We did catch some. F Look how baby then. But today I want to talk about this build. I do have a lot of footage from the garage, but it was so loud and noisy and we were busy just talking, hovering over this thing, trying to get this trolling motor mounted to it in the best possible way without drilling any holes in this boat. That's, that's what's awesome about it. It's removable and I'm going to make a removable deck video because I've never actually taken this off by myself yet and I just want to time myself doing that and see how long it's actually going to take to get this thing off. So when I went to Home Depot, I actually didn't even go to Home Depot first. I looked online to see what they sell and they sell marine plywood and I went with three quarter inch because it's stiffer and I wasn't really worried too much about the weight. I got this online through the website after I Google searched Home Depot's marine grade plywood and saw where it was produced and got all the specs on that. So that was really important to research before because I've never done this before and I know there's a lot of controversy out there as far as using wood on an aluminum boat but if you do it the way we did it I think this is going to last maybe 10, 15, 20 years. We fiberglass the crap out of this so there's no way water's getting in it's waterproof everywhere everything's fiberglass resin coated. Took a long time and we got high off of it, I'd say, in the garage. It wasn't very smart to do, but it's smart to do for a very long lasting fishing boat. This is my get home safe battery. And this is my use until it's dead battery. And I have a switch that I can turn it on and get home if that thing dies. This right here is my Minn Kota Tarova heading sensor. It is always on. It's actually connected to this battery, but it's not always on because we made a switch. Now it's on. So now it pairs with the Minn Kota up there. So now it knows the actual orientation, I believe. This thing, this thing is so much fun. I mean, I can't wait to just keep using this. Got to talk about this. I know I'm not supposed to give my license plate number away, but check this out. Pretty sweet thing for license plate, but I'm probably going to have to move it anyway if I do get a motor because it's right in the center. It's cool, but it may have to get moved or I'll just, I don't know. I'm sure it'll be fine. Back here we have, and here we tried to make everything as clean as possible. My dad found a PVC pipe that actually was the same color. We didn't paint that all the way across there and the wires all run through there. We rigged this up in parallel. If I want to turn this on, it pulls from both of them in 12 volts because that's a 12 volt trolling motor over there. So I don't know how it drains. I don't know if it drains one and then the other. I think it, since it's just current, I think it just drains both of them slower at 12 volts, which is really cool. So, but I never have this on because like I said, it's a backup battery. The first time I drove this down the road, we didn't have this board, which is also carpeted as you can tell and fiberglass resin. So these were, I mean, these were all over the place and they were really pulling on these cords. And I hated that. It just really pissed me off. So I had to fix that. So my dad came up with an idea. We put some aluminum underneath here, some one inch aluminum squares, and then screwed screws through that to lift it off of the ribs. So it's actually flush from rib to rib. It goes straight across here. And then we got foam in between here, like a lot of people do on their boats. It doesn't bow down. This is actually strapped underneath the board. So there's no screws on the actual battery. It's just one strap underneath. And I'm actually on a dirt road right now, and that's how I got here. And these are still in the same spot. So that is pretty cool. That's an SAE connector. We just connected to this battery on its own. So I only have to plug it into there to charge it. So that was the idea behind these boxes. We want to charge them and never take these off because taking these off is a real pain in the ass, especially the one with the switch. We got our four gauge wire with zip ties and then siliconed in each one of those ribs. We pulled them really tight and then stuck a couple zip ties back here to lock it in on this rib so it can't go back and loosen up. And that goes under these benches. And then if you notice those straps, that was another great idea by my dad. He's pretty smart. I actually got a little, I got a flip in it there, Vincent. A little underneath? Yeah. So there's a twist in there somewhere. And, uh, I didn't want a twist in there. 
I don't know how low I can get, but that was the whole idea. Not stub my toe. I actually can stub my toe if that is left like that, but I don't think that's going to happen very often. If it does, I'll, uh, I don't know, I'll switch this out with something that can possibly lock, maybe? I don't know. We got some hidden hinges. Alex Jones, I think. No, Anthony Jones on YouTube. Dude, your videos are awesome. And I got a lot of my ideas from you. I mean, the color of my boat is the same, and he has an awesome YouTube channel just all about John Boat builds. And it's something else you can just kind of step on and not have to worry about. These little lips that the rests on, so I can actually put all my weight on this. It's not going anywhere. And uh, it's on every corner, just about a half inch to three quarters of an inch on every side. I painted these with some gloss, Rust-Oleum, I believe it's called. Yep, to kind of match. Can you see me? Can you see me? This is also Rust-Oleum painted two by twos, and it's bracing the weight on the most weakest point of this boat deck, which is right above it, right here. I know it's really bright because I settings, but it's basically right in front of the hatch that I just showed you. Another cool thing about that brace, the experienced man decided something during the build process. We used to have the two by twos, one here and one here, but he said, it's plenty sturdy enough. Let's spread them out like they are now, which we did obviously. And I said, hell yeah. And he said, hell yeah. And now I'm very happy that we did because I can use this as storage obviously. So thanks again, dad. All right, so I'm about to show you one of my favorite things about the casting deck, which I think is really cool because it makes this removable without having to really do anything to the trolling motor. And uh, I don't know why I closed this, but the sun has come out. I th really thought we were gonna get rained on. It's inside this hatch, so it's really hard to show you, but I do have pictures that might help tell the story and show you how we built it. This right there is a circuit breaker, and that right there is a stud for the negative. These two, are all the way connected up through pardon the brightness here there and they're cable connected and screwed through underneath so you just got to disconnect there and there and let those wires hang those are always going to be there these two wires so that was another idea by the big man this is Minn Kota's version or i don't think it is i think it's um Marine Co. that I got on Amazon. It was a little bit cheaper. We had to drill a one inch hole for this and it was very scary after we finished this because the carpet was actually flush. We figured we need a hole and uh, that was the best thing we can come up with. So that's going to plug there. And then this is the ram mount for my fish finder that I'm going to mount on one day as soon as one adapter comes in and then another adapter comes in because the hook two and Minn Kota makes it really hard to make it work. So this is a quick bracket that a lot of you big time fishermen probably know if you have a bigger boat, but I, I wanted to put it on this uh, smaller John boat just because it is so easy to take off and it does have this little lock area and that is locked down to the front. <laughs> This one was like eight inches and this one was like something like 10. So it was kind of crooked. So I obviously needed to get new tires, which I already knew before I purchased, but I wanted to get bigger ones because now that I have 12 inches, they rotate less on the ground when I'm driving on the highway or if I'm gonna go on longer trips, it absorbs the bumps better and the bearings spin around less because the circumference or diameter, I guess you could say, of the wheel is larger. So there's less spinning happening. So the bearing grease inside isn't gonna spin and spit on the outside of the bearing casing as much. It's still gonna do it because I mean, it's spinning so fast, but they're bigger tires. So I know I didn't talk much about the carpet, but I didn't film much of the carpet because it was a very sticky and messy job. But basically we glued it on top of the sanded fiberglass resin coat. Anthony Jones did a great breakdown video of how to do this carpet. This was actually pretty cheap. I got all this carpet and I have more that I've been using on my bunks under there if you could see them. No, you can't see. I got plenty more basically, and it cost me like $50 to get a 10 by 12 sheet of this carpet. And it's, it's pretty good stuff, and I like the gray. If you wanna see how fast I remove this, I'm also curious on how fast I'm gonna remove this my first time ever. So I'll leave the video link up there, and uh, I'll see you in that video. I painted some rubber grip on the back bench, and uh, Austin, that went fishing with me my brother he said it worked really good i mean he had crocs on so rubber on rubber i figured it would be good but 